Here now in studio is Dr. Athena Starlard Davenport and Dr. Charles Rotimi, both here today to discuss diversity in genetics and genomics research. Good morning to you both. Thanks for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right, let's talk about the fact that, you know, in the field of genetics and genomics, diversity and representation in research is increasingly becoming more and more important. How do you make sure that there is a wide diversity in your research? Sure. So for my research, I study breast cancer genetics as well as sickle cell disease, and both of those diseases disproportionately affect black individuals or individuals of African ancestry. So for breast cancer, I have developed a study with participants, community advocates, and clinicians called the STAR study, called Sisters Taking a Stand for Breast Cancer Research. And in that study, it's an epidemiological study to understand the causes of breast cancer due to environment as well as genetic factors. So I think for me, for that study, it's important to include uh, minorities, particularly women of African ancestry, because they've been underrepresented in research, genetic research, for a long period of time, similarly to sickle cell disease. Dr. Rotimi, how important do you feel it is to make sure that these underrepresented communities are now a part of this research? I think it's critically important, um, not just from a social justice point of view, but also as a scientific imperative. Um, we cannot fully understand the meaning of some of these variations that we see that are tracking different diseases or, or traits of humans without looking at different parts of the world. Um, and uh, especially in African ancestry populations, uh, again, all of us will recognize that Africa is the cradle of humanity. And there are things that we see in the genome of African people around the world, whether it's in Africa or in the diaspora, that you really cannot study un unless you look at those populations. Um, and so it's not just to help African ancestry populations, but it's really to help the world. Um, you know. What are some of the challenges or maybe some of the obstacles that you face when it comes to inclusivity and making sure that you are reaching out to those underrepresented communities, making sure they're a part of the research? I find one of the major challenges has been that a lot of participants in my studies have recognized that a lot of people have not offered uh, for them to participate in a lot of research studies. Um, a lot of the times, uh, women say that nobody has asked them to participate in the studies, and it's not that they don't want to participate, they just haven't been approached to participate in studies. And a lot of times, research has shown that there's a lot of mistrust in the community due to various uh, racial discriminatory factors. And so I think educating the community about the importance of the research and why it will help them as well as future generations is critical. Dr. Rotimi, are there any new breakthroughs or anything exciting uh, in your mind that you think might help really address the health disparities that we're currently experiencing? I think one of the breakthroughs is that as geneticists and scientists, we are definitely recognizing you know, that we have not done a good job of expanding our the scope of the work that we do to bring different ancestral populations around the world. And some of that realization is as a result of the fact that we know there are aspects of the work that we are doing that we are not having good explanation for. Mm. And that we needed to, again, to embrace other parts of the world. And if we are going to deploy genomic medicine uh, in a way that benefits everybody everywhere, then we have to include the variations that, that exist in those parts of the world or in those communities, you know, ancestral backgrounds. And uh, I look at genetics, genomic medicine, it's almost like going to the tailor. If you want your clothes to fit, you better show up for your measurements. You cannot rely on my size or my measurements for your clothes, and that's how precise genetics can be. So we need to make sure that we understand how those variations are distributed around the world. And it's not really in the, con we can't conflate that understanding with the issue of race mm -hmm. or things like that, because that's not the point. Mm -hmm. We know that race is a social construct, but at the same time, uh, we know that we need to represent the distribution of the variations that exist around the world that don't necessarily track how we define ourselves socially. Uh, so to me, that's really the, the realization. 
And then there's a consciousness also going on that it is really terrible that if the outcome of all of our genetic efforts exacerbate already unacceptable hair disparity, then we really have failed, you know, yeah. I love the example of going to the tailor. That, that breaks it down for us laymen and makes it something we can understand. Um, but that also brings me to my final question for both of you. Given now that we are, we are finally addressing this problem, which I think is step number one, you know, acknowledging that this is big, an, an issue, how do we move forward? What is your hope for the future of genetics and genomics, given that we now know we need to do a better job with diversity and inclusion? Change in infrastructure. I think Dr. Rotimi, he hit it on the nail. I mean, every one size does not fit fit all. Um, you have to change, there's, you have to change infrastructure. That can be down to programs, um, just recognizing the health equity, talking about it, speaking about it, but it's a long effort. I, I absolutely agree. And I think there are very fundamental things that we can do as a society and especially funding agencies. I say that we need to be a little more um, understanding of the reason why certain parts of the of our society of our world have not been fully funded and therefore are not participating fully uh, in genomic uh, research one of the ways that we can address this is to have targeted funding uh, to bring on board those communities and parts of the world that have not participated fully well, the fact that you're both here today speaking about it, hopefully that's a huge first step forward, you know, making sure people are aware. And certainly thanks to you. And thank you for all of your research. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.